Hi, this is Trevor Conkergood. Welcome to this week's RNK Software Club's video of the week. And our topic for this week is using the Stitch Edit tool to edit your embroidery designs. And that's the tool that's found right here on your toolbar. It's got two options. Um, one says Edit Stitch, and the other one says Lasso. And so we'll look at that one today. Um, before I even, so I'm, I'm going to show you how I can combine two different designs together and use the Stitch Edit tool to remove the stitches from behind you know the second design and so if you look at the way this stitches out you'll notice that the uh, background color has had all of the stitches removed underneath um, where the flowers are going to come later and so um, we were able to kind of just manually kind of snip them out if you will using the stitch edit tool and so um, first of all I want to explain when you open up your embroidery designs and these are the ones that you purchased in a machine format so it could be PES or JEF or VP3 or DES or DST or any of these different ones when you say open and you browse around your computer and so I've got a PES file here for the flowers and a PES file here for the oval and I'm just going to open them both up so I'll select both files um, and I'm not going to choose the option called convert to outlines so we're just going to open these designs up as they were made and that's an important choice because when you choose convert to outlines the software will open up this oval but instead of giving you one sort of bank of stitches for each color, it would give you all kinds of small uh, segments that it would make from the stitches. And so in some times we want to use that option to be allow the computer or allow the software to make new stitches. You know, if I select this design right now, um, as it is with being all sort of stitches like this, I can resize them. But when I do, it'll be the same number of stitches. And notice at the top it says 8272 stitches, 8,272 stitches. If I make that slightly bigger or slightly smaller, those stitch counts do not change. And so that's, um, in, in this case, because they're stitches, why the stitch count doesn't change. If we were to open this design up again, and choose the option convert to outlines you would see that it would be different because the software is now reading the stitches and trying to create shapes that are therefore editable and notice when i look at the design and sequence now there's a run stitch and then a small piece of fill for that and then a run stitch to get to the next one and a fill stitch and a run stitch and a fill stitch. So every time the software saw a new pattern in the stitches, it created a new piece of embroidery. Now, all that said, if I select everything and change its size, the software generates new stitches based upon all those fills and runs that it's created and now it's got 10,774. So that can be a good thing, yes. However, um, sometimes you really don't want the software to change the original stitches, um, perhaps in a design like this floral one, where there's a lot of little pieces and it's very um, sort of ornately digitized. We would rather, you know, if we could sew the original stitches to do that. And so when you open them up, just know that when you open a design, if you choose convert to outlines, it gives the software a license to change the stitches. And if you don't check this box off, the software will not change your original stitches. And so that was an important lesson to learn for today. Um, we're not going to, we do a lot of our focuses around the shapes and using the shapes with convert to outlines but today i wanted to change it up and do the stitches and so if we just focus on the fact that and so this is the one with all the shapes that we resized and so i'll just close that and so we have simply the oval that's the you know stitches and we've got the floral design that's the all each one of these colors is a little sort of single bank of stitches and i can select all of those colors and copy them and then bring them on over to this oval and paste them. Now, the tool that I want you to learn about today, and maybe I'll just set this aside for a moment, um, is the Stitch Edit Tool. And it's right here. When you click on Stitch Edit Tool, 
Um, notice that we go into a stitch mode. In fact, there's two choices. If you look at the little triangle below, there is um, edit stitch and lasso. So let's look at edit stitch. When you click on edit stitch, notice that the, the workspace changed slightly. And we now have our color sort of slow redraw at the bottom and at the top. And it's now purpose has changed. This is a toolbar at the bottom that's meant to help you select stitches. And so you can do that you know, using this toolbar. Or, for example, if I just scroll closer to the design, notice how as I go over the stitches, they get highlighted with a little blue dot. And you can go through and pick out almost any stitch in the design with this technique. And so um, notice that I've selected that one and it's currently selected, but I can kind of hover around and look at maybe changing and selecting to a different one. So once I click on it, it becomes selected. And now I can click and drag to move it. Or right click on it and choose to delete it. Or insert new stitches before it or after it. So if I say delete, it'll delete that stitch. If I say um, right click and then insert before or after. So if I say insert after, it goes after that stitch and before this stitch, I can put new stitches in. Put in as many as you want. Um, if you're wondering how to stop adding new stitches, it's right click. So left click to draw them, right click to add them, and notice I can select them. You can also use the delete key on your keyboard. So just selecting this one and then hitting delete, 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 delete. So I can delete the stitches by just hitting the delete key. Notice that you can also select stitches by clicking and dragging a rectangle. So whatever's in your rectangle becomes selected. And you can move and or delete all of those stitches just like this. Right, and move the whole thing and or hit delete. And so if I delete them, then the software is going to have to kind of jump to get from whatever stitch was before to the whatever stitch was afterwards. And so um, if we go back to select mode now, we still have a design that has a bank of stitches in it for the oval. And when I, you know, watch it go a slow redraw, you'll see that it does, you know, part of the fill jumps over comes along, does the borders, same idea, does one border, does the other border. And so that's how you can remove stitches. So here's an, um, a unique example of it. So let's use undo to put those stitches back to where they were. And then let's select these stitches. And you can do all kinds of things with this editing stitch idea, whether it be inserting a little extra, you know, lock stitch somewhere that you might felt you needed it or adding a bit of detail that didn't exist in a design already just manually going in and if there was a lump or a hard spot maybe you want to just go in and take a few of the stitches out of that area so lots of editing techniques in this case what i'm going to do we're in select mode so like always in select mode if i select all these colors it'll select them and i can bring them over here and sort of like layer them over top of the other design and so sometimes when we layer designs like this we want to remove some stitches and i understand that um we do have a remove overlap tool but the remove overlaps tool only works on shapes and so you could use the remove overlaps tool to try and get you know to so then the idea would be you would select all of these parts of the design and try and have them remove the stitches that were underneath them um, but what I'm here to tell you is that sometimes that gets complicated because when you use, you know, open each of these two designs as shapes and then you start trying to do this automated kind of removal, sometimes it leaves little pieces underneath that you don't want or, you know, it's just maybe not as easy as you want it to be. And this is a really simple technique. So I'm going to show you a way that you can do it using stitch mode. And it's really quite clean. Um, so notice right now that the purple sews in its entirety underneath the floral border that I've layered over top. So this is how you use stitch mode to fix this. Now, this is a trick I'm going to show you that I've kind of figured out because um, if I want, I can't, if I just turn on stitch mode right now and think that I'm going to trick, you know, grab and drag a box, it's deleting everything in every color. Like, sure, I could delete all those stitches, but I removed all the stitches out of each color and we just want to remove them out of the, the background color, right? So let's hit undo. 
So fine, I know that I can use my select tool and use the sequence bar on the right and select, for example, the blue, the oval, and then right click and say, hide other. So that will hide all the other ones, right? And now you could use the select tool and drag a box to like take a chunk of the piece out. However, um, maybe that's not quite where I wanted to take it out. And so if I, and notice now that I've hidden those things, I can right click again and say show all. So that'll turn them all back on again. And so maybe that's not too bad. And, and, and maybe that was just good enough, right? A little hole like that, that was just removed some of the stitches. But you might have said, well, you could have taken more, right? There was still quite a bit left that you didn't. And it was hard to know where to take it. So this is why, I, where, so let me show you. I'm going to hit undo so that I can do this again. It looks like I'll hit undo again there. So it's all back to normal. And um, I'll also right click and say show all so that I can see everything again. So here's the trick that I wanted to um, add was if I wanted to, when I um, hide the other color, I can't really see where I want to cut anymore. So this is what I thought. Why don't I use my pencil and maybe get a little closer and then say, all right, I'm just going to draw a line, some artwork, like a reference that says, if I could remove the stitches that were like f up to there, you know what I mean? All the purple stitches from behind there, along here, along here. Um, and then you get down. So I don't really want to start removing the purple stitches down there. So I think I'll just go, okay, anything that's kind of like maybe a go out there and back over here again a little bit and then come out here. So basically what I'm saying is anything that's inside of that shape that I just drew would be what I would cut out and I'm going to right click. So we added this extra little piece to the design. That's really not part of our embroidery design. We just put it there as a reference mark. It's some artwork and I'm going to change it to be its own unique color so that I can use it to select it. And, and by the way, to make this trick work, you also have to convert this from artwork into run stitches because I want you to notice right now, if I click on the stitch uh, edit tool, it went away. You can't see your vector artwork. So I go back to select mode and I find that little run, that little artwork and I make it an embroidery stitch. I make it a run stitch. And so now here's another trick select the run stitch color and hold the control key down and select the, the the background color that you want. Those are the two colors that I want on my screen. Everything else I don't really want to see right now. And so I right click and say hide other. Now I've got just those two colors on my screen and I'm going to zoom in to kind of as close as I can where I can see just that area. And now I'm going to use the stitch edit tool to remove the stitches inside of the little run stitch. And you can be as careful as you want with this, but generally speaking, notice now that instead of just using the rectangle selection tool, that's, you know, normally it's rectangle would be like anything in that rectangle is going to get sliced out. And you could do that. Absolutely. Or my other idea was to use the lasso. And so I'll um, click off to let go of those stitches and click over here to change from stitch edit to lasso edit. So when you're in lasso edit, you get to like draw a line by clicking and dragging. And so I'm clicking and dragging and I'm, I'm just kind of trying to go on the inside of that other line that I drew. And I, um, I can kind of just come up here and then, okay, so maybe that's close enough and see how I, and I remove by hitting delete on my keyboard all of those stitches. Yeah. Now at that point, when I click on the select tool, we're back to having kind of like our regular select mode. I can click on my sequence bar and right click to say show all. So all my colors are back together. And I probably going to at this point, get rid of that little run stitch that we added because it was just a little temporary thing to help me know where to cut it. And so you can see now what I've done. I've taken the design and I've used the stitch editing tool to just kind of like snip the stitches out. And so as it sews color one, when it gets to an area where I've snipped, it'll just simply jump across the divide, you know, and your machine will trim that out, jump back across the divide to finish that kind of bit. Then it's going to have to come around again to do the border because 
let's face it, this is hard because there's a design that went all the way around a circle three or four times and we want to take a chunk of it out. So that's what, so this is only one method of doing this type of work, but I really like the edit stitch tool for getting in and sort of taking control of the end results and recognize that they simply all stay as sort of the raw stitch data and the cool thing about that is although you can edit it kind of on a more manual way um, it really doesn't change the original stitches and so if you bought some masterfully digitized butterflies you don't really want floriani kind of changing the stitches anyways you just want to maybe remove a few parts or add a little detail or something or put some text around it and so know that when you choose the open tool and you use convert to opens that that is an option that sometimes you want to choose yes and sometimes you choose no and it depends on the type of editing that you want to do and so i hope that was helpful and didn't leave you confused but i suppose you could watch it again and as always start a support ticket ticket and ask us a question or come on down to the floriani software owners forum and um, ask your questions there until next week have a great day thanks for listening and bye for now